Dan Mooney, Limerick author, published, infamous, man infamous. about town. Infamous. Man about town. What are you reading? What have you read over the last six weeks? Um, I just finished reading an advanced copy of Gronya Murphy's Where the Edges. That's coming okay. out in September. Um, With who? Legend Press. Nice. Who were my publishers for my first two. Um, my UK and Irish publishers for my first two. Um, and it's great. It's, you know, it's a story about loss and about grief and about coping. And it's all set around a tragic accident that's happening in, in real time throughout the story. You're getting different perspectives on this tragedy that's unfolding. Uh, and to two of the perspectives are from, from um, characters who are coping with, with grief. And oh, it's powerfully done. Like, it's really beautifully written. Um, some social commentary in there as well. And there's, it's got a lot. It's got a lot going on. It's got a lot of layers to it. Um, and it's her debut novel. Okay. Um, so I'm like, I'm excited for her because it's. Do you know her? We met at. She was on the shortlist for the Luke Bitmead Bursary Award. So we met in London in 2016 that night um, for the Luke Bitmead Award. Um, and that was, you know, that, that was cool to, to meet and then to. Four years later, her, her debut is coming out, which is great. And I, I actually never asked her. I, I should have asked her if that was, if it's the same book, but I don't think that it I is. I was about to ask that, yeah. Was it the same book? I don't think so, but I can't be sure. Um, I, I'll have to ask her the next time I'm chatting to her. Um, but, yeah, we were chatting the other day about how, you know, this lockdown is is affecting people and specifically how it's affecting people's, like, tastes in music. Because you've got this situation okay. going on where it's um, where you're in lockdown, nothing to do, so you're getting a little bit adventurous with your with what you would listen to for music because you know there's so much more time to listen now. Um, so yeah, I was listening to reggae and ska the other day, and I'm not really a reggae and ska kind of guy, um, but <laughs> but I you know I, I we're experimenting because we've got the time to do it, so. We were we were chatting about that. Um, I should say it, or I should actually ask her. I I don't think it is the same, but I'm not sure about it. But I liked that. You know, four years later, it's. I think it speaks about writers that she was shortlisted in 2016 for for an award for her first novel, and her first novel comes out four years later. It speaks to the kind of tenacity mm. and the, and the determination of writers, um, and that that bit that makes people write that's kind of unquantifiable like writers are going to write and yeah it's a possession really isn't it yeah yeah it's just this kind of you 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 have to do it and that sounds like like a like like a compulsion but really it's just a of course i am like like it's indefinable and indescribable every writer is like well, look, obviously i'm going to be writing and that's published unpublished self-published it's poets, it's short story writers, it's screenwriters, it's novelists, that idea that like, yeah, of course I'm writing that. What else would I possibly be doing? Um, so I, I'm, I'm delighted for it. It's great. It's a smashing novel to read. What I've been writing at the moment is, um, like I'm really, really excited about it. I don't have a title for it yet. Second draft. But you are writing during lockdown. Very important. You are one of the few people that I know who's been able to produce work consistently during lockdown that it yeah. hasn't deterred your focus. Do you think that's because you generally are quite like, cause you do shift work and stuff. You do spend a lot of time on your own mm. anyway. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you out of anybody, maybe it's the plot. Maybe it's because you knew what you were writing. Maybe it's cause you weren't trying to dip into your creativity, creativity. Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. you, you cross that part where you're like, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Um, or do you think it's because you like myself function on a high, like, I think we're kind of highly anxious people <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh. So then the world just met my anxiety level. I was like, oh, welcome. I've been um, here for years. 
Yeah, no, it's like it's not that for me because I, like I'm I'm I wouldn't say that I'm highly anxious. I'm a worrier. There's no there's no doubt about that. I I, I mm. worry about things, but I wouldn't like you know I I wouldn't say that I suffer from any you know very significant anxiety. But I do think it's a combo of of everything else. Um, and also one other thing, and that other thing is, I have not been as prolific as I'd like to be as a writer. And I tell myself as an excuse a lot that it's because I am an air traffic controller and I've got shift work to do and I work night shifts and I'm, I have early morning shifts to do. And then also I commentate on rugby matches. So that's, you know, there's a day wasted there. If there's a match on, I have to prepare for that and do my homework for that and then do the match and then drop the equipment off and, and probably have a point afterwards. And then there's um, rehearsing for plays, you know, college players and the tourist players, and I'm doing all of that. So I tell myself that's why I'm not getting writing done. Then lockdown starts, and I'm like, oh, now you don't have any excuses. You're not at work. There is no <laughs> rugby matches on. You're not rehearsing for any plays. You're telling yourself for years that the reason you're not prolific at writing is is because you've got all this other stuff on your plate. Well, now you better be able to back up that absolutely outrageous claim by doing some writing. Um, and then on top of it, like you said, I, I didn't, I wasn't being creative. Not like, I mean, it is, it's, it's still creativity. It's just the, the idea of the story was already there for that year and a half and the plan was already written out. So when I sit down to write, I know before I'm even at the laptop, I know what it is I'm writing today. Yeah. So that that takes some of the creativity out of it. I mean, you still have to be creative. You still have to have a, a turn of phrase and a command of language, and you still have to know what words to deploy and where. And so there's a creativity in that. But I don't have to like really dig deep for concepts and ideas because I've done all of the work on that already. That's already done. Yeah. It's been planned. It's been rattling around in my head for a year and a half. So. Which is yeah. the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. I, it really is. The work is all done. Not yeah. all done, yeah. but largely speaking, the work is done before I sit down to actually type chapter one. The work has been, you know, a lot of the work has been done, foundation work. Now, by the way, like no story ever, no plan ever survives the story. So I sit down with this plan and then I start writing and new things occur to me and characters go in unexpected directions and then suddenly you know you have to adapt the plan but largely speaking the work is done before i even start so um i'm you know i'm delighted with that that's it's my process and it works for me um and that between that and the the need to prove to myself that i'm that i can do it i started so like i, I had written chapter one and chapter two like at, at a right pace meeting a couple of months before coronavirus started. Mm -hmm. Our right group, our writing group. Uh, yeah, our writing group with um, some amazing people in it. And I had started it then, and I was really excited by the concept that I had. I was really excited by the idea that I had uh, and the characters that I was working with. But I, I felt like I just hadn't really delivered on that first chapter so on march the 19th i wrote rewrote that first chapter start to finish and kicked on from there and on may the 19th i i wrote the end at the end of the novel and i had eighty one thousand words written but 80 just shy of eighty one thousand words written um and it was two months uh, you're like i'm really really delighted about that but again, you know, it's that it's proven to myself that I can, and also um, the groundwork is done, largely speaking, before I start. You know? Yeah, I mean, when you have nothing else to do, and you have that kind of drive, then it's amazing what you can do in two months, three months. I mean, look, they do one thousand words might be shit. Yeah, and likely <laughs> they're not, <laughs> and, and likely a large chunk of them are. No, but it's like now, now is when the real writing starts. Like, 
like the first part is the creative pr process and then and the plotting and all of that and then getting the words out but it's really when you get those 80,000 words out that's when you start like actually writing the book yeah yeah um I was talking to, to Sam Windrum about this yesterday like the idea of I said it a, a thousand times um but finished is better than good because yeah. you can't fix it unless it's finished so um and what I, I feel like what I've got is, is strong. This is, by the way, this is me worrying. Right? This is where the worrier in me comes out. I'm worried that I think I've got something good. That, like, welcome to my awful brain. I'm worried because, oh, no. I think I, because I think I've got something good. I see, because the problem is that what if it's not? Like, what if, it, what if I, I'm here's me sitting here going, oh, I think this is really good. I think I've got something really great here. And then it turns out, no, man, what you've got is garbage. You got, you got 80,000 words of garbage. Um, You're waiting for someone to just come along and kick you in the nads. Yeah. Shit. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that I'm greatly overestimating the quality of, of what I've got, but I, you know, I work on it and I'll, I hope I'll have very soon. I hope I'll have something quite, quite solid. Um, and something good but as you say the, the getting it done getting it finished uh, the first draft really delighted with that that's fantastic but that's not the work like now now the picking it into some kind of a decent shape and and giving it flavor and like i've added you know, since then i you know gone back and done draft two mm -hmm. and the word count is now eighty three thousand words so i added three thousand words that were necessary words. They they provide flavor. They provide context. Their seasoning. They they make the story flow better from here to here because in the first draft it's just and then they did this and then and then they did this and now I have three thousand words to make these two things kind of reach out to each other and that's the that's the refining and the editing part, which is a part that I hate doing, by the way. I absolutely hate it. Oh, really? It. That's my favorite part. I hate it. When the work's done and you're like, oh, I just put in this, this one sentence. And then you're like, oh, I'm such a genius. I did one sentence today. And then, as, <laughs> and then you go and take a nap. And yeah, I've seen more of you during lockdown than I have in, in a year. <laughs> Digitally. Um, but it, I think that goes back to what I was saying before about, you know, I do two plays a year and both of those plays require, you know, it's about two and a half months each of, of time in terms of rehearsing in the evenings and then doing the performance to play itself. So effectively five months of, of the year, most evenings I'll be either at work or at rehearsal. Um, and then there's commentary for rugby matches and there's trips to see Christine's family in the States, which we may not be able to do for some time now. Um, so my time isn't, a lot of the time my time isn't my own. Um, whereas in lockdown, all of my time is my own, um, which is just a bizarre kind of a, a turnaround, you know? I think we uh, created a video interview that's going to make every writer in the world hate you <laughs> well I, that's something um I don't, I don't know if you could hear More than usual. Input. I, I don't know if you could hear killian's input into this conversation he just chimed in there but um hello killian this is this is what i was talking about like when i'm down here and i'm trying to get some writing done he'll be this is normally where he does be hanging out hello hello killian um I, Was like, someone I, trying to be productive without me? <laughs> but yes, I, so at the start, like I was so I was so delighted with myself because I was getting all this writing done. I was really pleased about it. I was properly pumped up about it. That's brilliant. And then other writers were going, oh, "I've gonna like I'm not getting anything done." I feel so. I I, I wasn't telling anyone like getting loads of writing done at, at the start i was pretty excited to tell everyone i've been really productive i've written twenty thousand words so far it's going really well and everyone else started off with this lockdown thing is terrible i'm not getting any writing done and i'm like back away back away <laughs> back away don't say anything so um yeah i mean I, I don't think anyone should feel under pressure to to be productive it's just not that time you shouldn't you know we're under enough strain as it is kind of 
mentally, psychologically, emotionally, all of that stuff. So I don't, well, I wouldn't, it's not going to be helpful to anyone to feel under pressure to do anything, yeah. to perform, to, to attend Zoom quizzes, to whatever it might be. You got to kind of suit yourself at the moment. Um, and, and I'm just lucky that for me, I have been able to be productive. Um, I bet Roisin Meany has too. I'd be willing to bet I bet Roisin Meany. I bet Donald Ryan has written like five novels. I bet. Donald, I, I'm, I, I'm really glad that you said that about Donald Ryan earlier on where you said that he sometimes he, he gets home from a walk and he's like, oh, I'm exhausted from working. I'm like, good, good. <laughs> I hope you are. I hope it's hard work being one of the best writers in the entire universe and being able to write that stuff and making me feel those things. I hope it's hard work, Donald. <laughs> I hope you're wrecked. <laughs> it better not be easy. I hope, it's, I hope you're shattered from it. You made me feel things the last time. Well, I, I imagine that Donald writes like this, right? That he sits down at the laptop because he does write on a laptop um, and writes one sentence and then is like, yeah, that's devastating. I'm done. And then gets up and walks <laughs> off. And then, and then sits down the next day and does it again. <laughs> Until it's done. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad he... I'm glad he's shattered. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I bet, I bet Roisin is, um, she's another one, like 17 novels. I know. You know. We're launching her, um, her new novel virtually. Um, actually, by the time this goes out, we will have already launched it. Um, and yeah, she's, the woman's a machine. Yeah. It's like, she's uh, actually a machine. Unbelievable. It, yeah. And it, you know what, the, the killer thing there, um, Listen to me, I'm giving out about Donald Ryan, now I'm giving out about Roisin Meany. But the killer thing about it is, the deck, 17 novels, they're all brilliant. Tell you what, That's Roisin, it, they're all good. I, te I tell you what, Roisin, you can, you can pick prolific or you can pick good, <laughs> but you can't have both. <laughs> Don't be greedy. Um, yeah, because like even Stephen King writes the odd shite book. Yeah, yeah. And Roisin's just churning out hit after hit after hit. Yeah, like, they're just great. Like, they're just, she's just so good at what she does. So brilliant. It's, it's I'm, I'm, I sound like such a... Yeah, you're a bitter old man. Give, we've give, me, give, me, give me some other writers who are friends of mine that I can badmouth. Who else mm. have we got? Who else? Line, line someone else up there and I'll take a shot at them too. Uh, no, Sarah don't. I, that was a joke. That was a joke. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Also, okay. nobody can say anything bad about Sarah because she's Sarah and also Ger Fitz is gigantic. So, uh, that is you, true. You know, Her husband is an old um, so thank you so much for sitting down to talk about your writing life. Not at all. I'm absolutely delighted. I hope I didn't ramble uh, too much. That's a no, that's you a, didn't. But I just realised uh, we haven't mentioned O'Mahony's at all. That's where I work. There you go. <laughs> I, Yay, well, when you when you're talking about um about the launch, like that, there there's a bit that I feel devastated for Roisin for because that launch day in O'Mahony's is always such a great kind of moment for everyone. It's great crack, yeah. And you know, that, like there's no writer in Limerick that that wants that launch day in Omanis to go by them because that's, it, it, it's a momentous kind of occasion. So I feel quite bad for her in that respect. Kind of hoping that by the time that I find a home for whatever just finished, that everything will be reopened and I can have my day inside there again. But who knows? Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Smashing. Thank you.